Dinosaurs confirmed. Yes, dinosaurs have finally been confirmed. And don't even try to act like this isn't a lifelong dream for you, because I know it is. I mean, don't you guys remember growing up, your teachers would ask you, like, Hey, little guy, what do you want to be when you grow up? And all your buddies would say something like, Oh, I want to be a firefighter. Oh, I want to be a policeman. And I was always like, I want to be a dinosaur. You guys are all idiots. Now, keep in mind that this year dinosaur mask is technically a gadget. It is purely cosmetic and doesn't offer you any sort of in-game advantage. I mean, I guess it does partially give you some sort of advantage in that if you're on the other team and maybe a little bit terrifying to see a T-Rex running at you with a shotgun, but from a technical or statistical standpoint, no advantage. And in addition to this here dinosaur mask you can use as a cop, you can also use a different kind of mask as a criminal, and admittedly, it makes me a little uncomfortable. Alright, I mean, just look at this thing. Yeah, I... I, uh, I don't think I'm gonna be wearing that when the game comes out. No thank you, that is definitely no bueno, alright? No thank you. Without going into detail, I don't want to look like a furry while I'm trying to kill other people. That is a definite no. Just absolutely no. Nein. Nicht. Nicht. No. Do not. Nope. Mm -mm. But I must admit, they actually put a lot of time and effort into these models. Like, if you're the assault class as a criminal, the mask doesn't clip through your hood and it's actually really meticulously put together. But still, I won't be wearing it. I mean, I'll definitely wear the dinosaur mask. I will wear that, but definitely not this wolf mask, alright? It makes me uncomfortable. But moving on to the introduction of this new competitive game mode called Rescue on the map derailed, it's actually pretty simple to explain. So you got the cops who are trying to infiltrate this particular warehouse and retrieve the two hostages that are tied up inside and bring them to the extraction point at their police cruisers near where they spawn. The criminals, on the other hand, just need to make sure this doesn't happen, so they essentially just need to kill everything that moves, which is always pretty simple. So in that respect, you can think of the cops as attackers and the criminals as defenders. Now, in order to win, the cops only need to retrieve one of the two hostages. You don't have to get both to win. And the hostages don't seem to be able to magically reset like a flag, so let's say I shoot a dude that was carrying a hostage on his back. That specific hostage stays in that location and can't be reset like this is capture the flag. And that's about it. It's pretty simple, right? Now, I'm not going to give you guys some sort of uber tactical advice as to how to dominate this 5v5 game mode or which assault rifle is best to use or blah blah blah. You guys know that I'm not really qualified to give out tips when it comes to super competitive battlefield, but I would like to briefly talk about why this game mode exists and what I think about it. So it should be pretty obvious that Visceral and EA are trying to make Hardline into a competitive game with modes such as this one. You know, 5v5, small maps, tight objective play, it just screams Counter-Strike to me and plays as a mode that caters to competition, but if I can put it to you as directly as I possibly can, I don't think competitive Battlefield Hardline is going to happen, ever. Now I know that there have been large pushes in the past to make competitive Battlefield into a real thing by, you know, organizations like Level Battlefield, and I guess you could technically make the point that there is some competitive Battlefield right now because it's featured on ESL, but nobody really watches it. I mean, to be completely honest with you, it's not huge. I mean, it, it gets a couple thousand viewers tops, and when it's streamed, it's not all that noteworthy. So allow me to clarify. I don't think Battlefield Hardline will be a successful competitive game. So, although competition may exist for it, I don't think it will be any larger than it was in BF4, which is really pretty small. You know, when I think of successful competitive games, I think of, you know, League of Legends, Dota 2, Counter-Strike GO, and maybe a little bit of Hearthstone, StarCraft in Korea, and I guess Call of Duty on the console side, but that's about it. So, although other competitive communities may exist, they're very tiny in comparison. So, where Battlefield Competitive may bring a couple thousand people to watch, some of these games like League and Dota and CSGO, they, they bring hundreds of thousands, even millions to watch with massive sponsorships and dedicated professional teams. So, simply put, I think Visceral has included this rescue mode as a potential platform for competitive play, but I don't think it'll happen, and I'll briefly explain to you why. But before I begin, allow me to start off by saying that at the end of the day, I think I'm here to entertain you. It's not like I'm forcing you to be entertained, like, are you not entertained? But I will avoid using any kind of esoteric terminology when talking about 
why this hardline competitive nonsense won't happen because I certainly don't want to bore you but it's pretty simple why it won't work and it's based around the frostbite engine found in hardline. So number one, you can't have a competitive game that rewards higher ping players. Now obviously the majority of competitive battlefield will not be played on land because of the cost to get guys in the same room which include plane tickets, hotel rooms, and other expenses and money that isn't exactly gushing out of battlefield competitive right now. So with remote players you can easily have problems with latency that gives those with higher pings a definite advantage. And I say definite advantage from the extent of personal experience after playing both against other dudes in a LAN environment like I did at EA in the same room and also too during the first few hours of the beta. Now during the first few hours of the beta it was around 2 a.m. in the United States so most Americans were asleep and as a result we played against a whole bunch of Japanese players that were connecting to American servers because Japanese servers weren't populated yet. And with their Japanese pings of between 150 and 200, the gameplay was absolutely terrible. Whether it was getting shot around corners or dying before you even rounded the corner or even getting insta-kill with assault rifles, the latency advantage was obvious. And if you haven't experienced these certain gameplay mechanics yet, I encourage you to play in Japan or at least relative to where I am located on the earth. Playing in Japan gives me about a, a 160 to a 180 ping which I have done on numerous occasions, and the advantage is undeniable. Now, given your location on the globe, you connecting to Japan probably won't give you between 150 and 200 ping, unless you're located in the western United States, so if you want to see the latency advantage that I'm talking about, you'll have to connect to a foreign country that results in your ping being between 150 and 200, and it is absolutely ridiculous how advantageous it feels. Now, number two as to why I don't think competitive hardline is going to work, simply put, is that you still get shot around corners way too often even against players that have great ping. So whether it's a rock or a column or a house or a doorway, no matter what it is, you still get shot around cover way too frequently. And I know that every forum that talks about hardline has been blabbing on about, oh, the net code is so much better, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, from a technical standpoint, it's not different from BF4. I mean, sure, they've made some changes and improvements to the system in the past seven or eight months, and a higher frequency network update feature may be coming in the future, but this issue is by no means fixed. Now, I think the reason that it feels different from BF4 to so many different people is the lower time to kill, as in, you can kill people much faster in this game. And although I've said it time and time again over the past few months that a higher time to kill, as in lower bullet damage, would benefit the entire game tremendously, Obviously not very many people agree with me. I think the lower bullet damage won't necessarily fix the issues with the engine, but I think it does a wonderful job of treating the symptoms of the problem. It's not a perfect cure to the root cause, but I think the game is much more playable with lower bullet damage. So to put it to you simply, I would rather have it similar to the first beta of Hardline where it took many more shots to kill someone instead of the most recent beta where everybody seems to drop instantly. And number three as to why I think competitive Hardline won't happen is what I personally call getting framed. Now I don't mean it in the sense of somebody setting you up as a murderer or trying to get you imprisoned. What I mean is getting 100 to 0 in a single frame. It's like the opposite of Drake. So instead of going 0 to 100 real quick, you're going 100 to 0 real quick. So instead of getting shot by an assault rifle, like 25 damage, 25 damage, 25 damage, and 25 damage, with you dying in four bullets, you are instead instantly put down in a single frame, just instantly dead. Now, keep in mind, I'm not talking about sniper rifles or shotguns. I'm talking about weapons that take, you know, at least four to five bullets to kill you like assault rifles. And, you know, with this sort of mechanic where you die before you even know that you're getting shot, with you dropping to the ground, being insta-killed in a single frame, I think it presents a major issue for a competitive battlefield. And that's about it. That's why I think that although it's nice to have a competitive 5v5 game mode in Hardline, I don't think it will really go anywhere because of these three simple problems. But don't get me wrong, I love Hardline. I think the new game is genius. I love the fast paced game modes and the maps are wonderful, but I do not think that Hardline has a competitive future. Just absolutely not. Just no, absolutely not. Nope, nope, no. Nope. So to put it to you simply, in the words of Regina George, stop trying to make competitive Battlefield happen. It's not gonna happen. <laughs>